Hey everyone, what's up? My name is Kaylee and welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to be telling you about six types of extremely annoying people that everybody hates unless they are that person. So without further ado, I'm just going to get right into the video. I'm just going to start off with the first person and I might get a little flustered. I might run out of my breath, but I think that has to do with the content of the video. So yeah, then that I hate the most, I'd have to say, was the kind of person that takes up way too much space. They're on the bus, they're standing like this, you don't want to go next to them because they're taking up all that room. Or it's the usually a woman with her leg out, her toe like crossed her legs, her leg is super far out. You're walking by and she looks at you, doesn't move her leg. So you have to like step over her leg for some reason. Or the guy who has, usually guy, has his legs spread open super wide. Like, I know you're trying to overcompensate that maybe your package is a little bit smaller than you'd like. So you're trying to keep your legs so open that, because if you even minutely close your legs, it'll squish your giant package. But I'm pretty sure most men are able to do that. And I'm highly doubtful that you are the exception with the huge one. So put that stuff away. Like, just... Yeah, that kind of person also, I'd say, if you're sitting in front of them, they're usually like, they have their legs stretched out, or they're like kicking the back of your chair, or you can feel it on your coat, like their foot, like on, by your chair or something. Like, they're always in your space, taking up too much space. And I know that's supposed to mean that they're confident, but it is at the expense, when it's at the expense of other people and their comfort, I think that that's completely rude and completely not okay. So that's my number one. My number two also has to do with a little bit of space problems, is it's pretty much when there's usually two people, they're coming in, let's just let have a scenario, let's say they're coming into the grocery store, they're in the doorway, one person's like, oh hey Gretchen, haven't seen you for a while, how's the husband? And the other one's like, Oh, great, Myrtle. I, oh, just doing great. Fabulous, fabulous. So what have you been up to? And they're slowly getting their, you know, um, baskets or something, but they're blocking every single person. And you say, excuse me, and they look at you like you're rude because not only did you interrupt their, your, their conversation, but you're asking them to move, and that's such an insult. It's just so frustrating. Um, people that stand in the doorway at buses, like, They'll stand in the doorway even though the bus is empty but they have to stand in the place where every single person needs to get through to get off the bus and then they get upset that you're kind of pushing them a little it's like but you chose the worst possible place to stand in the bus like I just don't get it I don't get it okay so number three is inappropriate mergers so what I mean by that is basically when you're merging the proper etiquette is They'll have like the lane and you'll have signs on the side that say merge. This lane doesn't, this lane is like not gonna last. It's not forever. It's, yeah, so you have to merge into the lane next to you. And with the, you'll see like the arrows on the street too and the, the shoulder is slowly like disappearing. So proper etiquette is you get over as quickly as possible. So once you see the sign, you're like, oh, okay. And then you start to try to move over. Another thing you should do is let one original car from the lane go, you fit in there, then another original car go, then the next person fit in there. Instead of everybody just gunning to the exact front to try and budge in front of all the people that are originally in the lane. Now, that's rude in itself, but what I'm talking about is the kind of people that keep going in the merge lane, even after it's run out, to the very last possible place that they could go probably on the side of the road even, to get to the very front and they zoom past and they try and get in front of everyone to stick the nose of their car in because they're the most important and we, we don't have any place good to go. They are going to some kind of fabulous event and we should all just know that and give them the right of way, right? My number four is going to be thirsty people because I've talked a lot about people getting in your way and in your space and of course that's annoying but Thirsty people has a special place in my heart because I find them really annoying that I have to completely turn my head away from them because I can't even look. It just makes me so frustrated. And these kind of people, let me explain what I mean by thirsty. So these kind of people will go into school or whatever setting, they'll come in and they'll immediately scan the room for the best looking people. Alright? So then they come in, 
they try to sit next to the best looking people and immediately start grooming themselves like looking around constantly looking at people constantly like checking everyone out constantly checking themselves out constantly staring at people all of these things are such a distracting they are such a distraction for me like if i'm sitting in class and i'm seeing this person constantly fidgeting with themselves constantly looking around even chatting with people these people are usually chatterboxes too it's just the most distracting and annoying thing that i could ever I could ever see pretty much in class. More so than the sleeper, the cougher, the sniffer. Like there's lots of annoying people in class, but this this type of person irks me the most. And it's also like, why are you here? Like, are you this is not a beauty pageant. Did you get lost? Like, did you get lost on your way to your beauty pageant? Because this is like English or whatever. So those people really bother me. And my number five is just super pushy people. So they might be trying to get on the bus while you're trying to get off the bus. They might run, like see you coming to gather in a line in Starbucks and hustle to get there before you. Um, just like very pushy people. Like I used to work in a restaurant and I, I work in a restaurant now, let's just, let's be fair. <laughs> um, but yeah, I've worked in restaurants for a long time and it's kind of funny when people order food, like they'll order a steak well done, and then me immediately after I leave, they're already looking around like, where's my food? Where's my food? It's like, does the laws of time and physics not apply to you? Like, is your steak, are you so special that your steak is immediately cooked? We, we were psychic that your presence was gonna come to the restaurant so we already started your food before you even knew you wanted it. Like, I just don't understand. I, I don't get these people. So, and I, uh, impatient people, I guess. Pushy and impatient people. Because and another good example for pushy people, I would say, is Black, Black Friday shoppers. So, what I don't get, I'm Canadian, we don't have like a huge Black Friday kind of thing, but when I ever watch the news, on Black Friday, somebody always gets trampled in the States, like at a Walmart or something, and I'll watch and I'll just be like, how good are these sales? Like, are, like, are they giving away TVs for a dollar? Because if they're not, why would you wait in line like 24 hours ahead of time when you could just work 24 more hours and afford it at regular price? And then you don't have to, or buy online. You don't have to fight people for this kind of stuff. I just don't get it. I don't understand why people are willing to like stampede over each other and trample each other for something like that. It, that's the pushy people mentality, I guess. But those kind of people, they, I don't, I don't get it. Okay, and number six, the very last one of all, I would say, um, has its merit. It's, it's the kind of person that screams at you while you're walking down the street through a car window or something. And, I, and I'm not just saying this happens to girls, this happens to guys too, like any kind of harassment or like derogatory thing that someone just screams out, out the window at you, like I'm not even gonna say it because most of them are horrible things or hey baby or cat calls or just insults, something like that. And what I wanna know, especially with the cat calls though, is how often does that work for you? Like these kind of people, how often do you say, hey baby? How you doing? You look nice today, but like in a gross way. How many times does the girl walk up to a car, lean in the window, and chat up the guy, they get an, each other's number, they go on a date, and then they get married, and they tell their kids, hey, how did you and mom meet? Oh, you know, I just screamed out my car window at her, called her a, like a nice looking piece of ass, and here you are kids, that's the story. Like. Does that, I don't understand how that works for people. Like, how, what what do they expect from it besides, I don't I don't understand what they expect for it. I don't even know. I can't even guess what they think is gonna happen. So if you like this video, I can do more of super annoying people. Let me know and let me know your super annoying people because I enjoy reading those kind of things. I don't know, maybe. I just like enjoying reading about annoying people. So yeah, don't forget to like this video and subscribe to me because it means a lot to me and I will see you in the next video. So yeah, probably next week. Bye! Hey everyone, what's up? My name is Kaylee and welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to be talking to you about why I think there should be more male nudity in movies, television, the media, magazines, what have you. And first of all,
of all, I wanted to start off with how it's currently portrayed. So what I consider, the, when I consider male nudity and what conjures up in my 